Don't say yes to everything. Sometimes no is actually the best answer. I'm Joel, this is Chase. Welcome back to the Williams L.B. Howard and Easter YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to talk about how you can get yourself into trouble by saying yes to too many things. Now, yes, this is a legal video and we're gonna talk about this in a legal realm, but it really applies to many different aspects of life. But, um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind for us as lawyers and business owners is when you say yes to every potential case, then you can find yourself just stressed out, anxiety, overworked, stretched too thin, all of that kind of stuff. You no, yeah, absolutely. And you know, a lot of times you, I mean, we help people every day and me specifically, like I always have the inclination, I want to help everyone all the time. Anytime you get a case, like you want to do everything you can to help, help, help. And I think it really is like a, a learned skill to really just have the confidence, knowledge, just to say, hey, I'd love to help you, but I can't, you know, can't take all the cases. Um, Cause that's what well, our firm, that's just not really how we operate. But yeah, having the, I guess, courage to say no is very, very helpful. Yeah, so. and especially like if you're a lawyer and you know you're not the best fit for that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it could be that you're not the best fit because it's not your area of expertise. It could be you're not the best fit because you're already overworked and you don't have the time to allocate to that case. Mm -hmm. um, it could be for a myriad of reasons, but if you're not the best fit, don't be afraid to say no because usually when your gut tells you to say no and you go against that and you say yes, you end up regretting it later. Yeah, it's also you know the case not being the right fit for us, but even the potential client not being the right fit for mm -hmm. us too. There's a lot of times you just don't jive with someone, and especially when we do when we're constantly you know communicating, talking with clients, both ourselves and our staff, and things like that. If it's just not a good match, you got to know when to say no, um, because it would it could be a potential that later on down the road the relationship just sours even more. So. Yeah, that's a really good point. If you're interviewing lawyers. Um, or if you're interviewing anybody to hire them in a professional capacity, if you don't feel like they're a good fit, don't be afraid to say no. Mm -hmm. You know, like you might like the person, but you don't feel like they're the best fit for you, so don't be afraid to say no. Number two, from a legal perspective, there are sometimes, it's not very often, but there are times where a client will want you to advance a uh, unethical or sometimes illegal uh, position or a dishonest position in a case. And in those situations, I think you absolutely have to say no. Right, that kind of just goes back to the know who you're, you know, from the plaintiff side, we're interviewing clients just as much as they're interviewing us and just knowing when you're choosing to represent someone, if you feel like they're not gonna be a good fit, you feel like they're gonna to wanna to do shady things, know when to say no. No, it's okay to just cut the relationship loose if you, you know, during that initial interview, if you didn't, you know, pick up on the fact that they're gonna be shady or something like that, is having the courage to say, you know what? I'm done. No means no now. End that relationship and move on. Yeah, and even if they slip through the cracks and become a client, if you're in litigation and they want to ignore a court order or, or if they want to do something that you know is not in their best interest and is going to harm their case, um, sometimes you just have to say no. And if they still insist on it, then say, look, you know, I'm no longer the best fit for you. I'm happy to help you find somebody else to represent you, but I'm not willing to sacrifice my integrity to take that course of action. Yeah, absolutely. So another thing is, uh, as lawyers, you would imagine we get asked questions all the time on things that we don't necessarily do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's friends and family, right? So. I'm not good at this because, again, I'm always willing to try to help and things like He's that. He's terrible at this. Terrible at it. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes you have to say no to friends and family too if they want, you know, advice on something or to even ask you to do something. Uh, just know when to say no. Know when you're stepping out of your comfort zone and what you do um, and know just not to do that. Yeah. And and there's many reasons for that. It's it's for your own sanity and your own mental health and well-being um, so that you don't get burned out. But it's also for your financial well-being because literally as lawyers, the, we don't have a, a, a tool or a car or something to sell the public. We, it's our time and our knowledge. And so we have to figure out how to best allocate that time and we need to be able to dedicate that to the people who are paying us. And then we need to be able to dedicate some of that time to ourselves so that we remain healthy and then also to our immediate family who we love and who we owe an obligation to spend time on um, and when you have people that it's always it always happens the same way hey I got a quick question 
-hmm. you have a second or Facebook message or email or whatever, um, well, I wouldn't, I would never go to a car dealership. Like one of Chase's best friends owns a car dealership. I would never go to him and say, Hey, you mind if I have that car? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Just it, toss me those keys. <laughs> yeah, it would make no sense to do that because that, I mean, that's how he makes a living. He sells cars, he repairs cars and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, but for some reason, when people come to lawyers about that, they, they feel like there's it's an exception to the rule and it's really not. So it's not that you're being rude or disrespectful. And sometimes maybe you do have the time to give a free piece of advice or something like that. Um, but just don't get taken advantage of with it and if you need to say no say no yeah i think another thing too kind of in that same vein is time right we get asked to donate time all right oh, yeah. time a lot um come do this come do that uh and you made a good point it's you know we have a duty to our clients to be the best lawyers we can to our clients we have a duty to our families to be the best family men we can be to our kids and things like that and if you keep saying yes to everything that's pulling at that time away from you you're taking away from somewhere else so again saying no to events or saying no to uh, any you know sort of engagement or things like that is okay to do right FOMO yeah. you're not gonna miss out on everything <laughs> yes yeah. so. well and and also like as members of the community and members of the legal profession we do want to do things to make our profession and the world uh, and our communities better um, but I think what it comes down to is when we are going to volunteer time or we're going to serve on this board or we're gonna serve the bar in this capacity or whatever, we have to prioritize what means the most to us. Like what motivates us, what do we get satisfaction out of by volunteering our time here? Because there's always places that need volunteers and they need people to serve in different positions uh, for free. And that's fine, but you can't do it all. Right. Like pick what, what moves you, what means the most to you, and go with that and don't try to be everything to everybody. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, that can be hard to do, especially depending on the type of personality you are, type of person you are. Um, it's hard to say no to things. It's hard to yeah. say no to try to help someone. It's hard to say no if someone's asking for your help to, like you said, serve on a board. Um, but at the same time, you do kind of have to put yourself first and really ask yourself, is that the best fit for me? Is that the best thing for me to do right now? That's right. Um, also, in this applies to things outside of the legal realm, but, but especially as business owners, uh, you don't have to say yes to every meeting request. Um, I am not terrible at this. I will say no to a meeting request <laughs> quickly. True. Um, but there are, there's always somebody that wants your time. You get the emails requesting meetings. You get people just showing up out of the blue requesting meetings. You get everything under the sun, phone calls, social media messages, all this. Hey, do, when can I meet with you for 20 minutes? We can do this for you or this for you or that for you or whatever. I, you know, at some point it just becomes white noise to me. And if I took every meeting that somebody requests, then I wouldn't have time for my clients. I wouldn't have time for my family. I wouldn't have time for my law partners. I wouldn't have time for my employees that work here that, that need my guidance and advice sometimes. Um, and so I just generally say no to it. And uh, you know, if somebody really feels like they can add value to my life or to my law practice, they're gonna work hard enough to convince me to say yes to that meeting. But yeah, you just can't say yes to all of it. Right, and I, we should get a shirt that just says, just say no. Yeah. <laughs> like a slogan. To Take say, me back to Nancy no. Reagan days. Right. We don't say no to everything, right? Let's just be clear. But you just got to be mindful about what it is that you are accepting and saying no to. And kind of last but not least, especially like in lawyers and what we do, you know, we get invited to social settings, social gatherings oh, all yeah. the time, right? Whether it's a networking event here, networking event there, golf, which I, I say yes to golf. <laughs> no, but in serious, you know, you, you have to know when to not or know when to say no to those events because it literally could be every night of the week or you know for weeks on at a time yeah. that you could be asked to go to these events so and you have to understand what you're walking into <laughs> as well because some social settings are um, they will align with your your morals your personal morals your business morals your your preferences as to what you like to be around mm -hmm. uh, what you should be around from a public's perspective and a business mm -hmm. and some things are completely not <laughs> right. the opposite right. of what you personally want to be around or what even if you do personally want to be around it 
stuff that you shouldn't be around right. professionally because you're associated with that. Um, so don't be afraid to say no to it, but um, I think what it all comes down to from a professional's perspective is knowing how to wisely allocate your time. So as a, as a lawyer, knowing how to allocate your time amongst people that need you, uh, people that you have obligations to, whether it be a client, whether it be your coworkers, whether it be the court, uh, whether it be your family, um, but prioritize those correctly and then, you know, just stick to it and don't give in even when it's hard to say no, sometimes that's the best thing uh, to do. Yeah, and it's hard to do too, right? I mean, especially I remember myself as a young lawyer, you're wanting to get put yourself out there, go to all the events, say yes to all the meetings, help everyone you can because you want to kind of be front of mind to all that. But at some point, like you said, you can do it too much to your detriment when you got to be able to have the courage to step back and say, nah, you know what, I'm not going to take that meeting. Or, you know what, maybe you're not a good client, you're not a good fit for me, knowing that you could be potentially turning down business or turning down opportunities to make more business. So, yeah. yeah. And, and so I guess from a general public's perspective, when you contact a lawyer and they say uh, no, that or they decline your case or to you know, move forward with your claim, don't take it personally because there could be a million different reasons right. for that. Um, and if the lawyer's saying no or declines your case, it's probably better for you that they've had the courage to say no mm -hmm. um, because it will help avoid problems down the road. Because listen, there are a million lawyers in this world. Mm -hmm. um, there's likely somebody that can say yes, it's just not that particular one. Right, and if a lawyer says no, that doesn't necessarily mean you don't have a case. That's and right. I tell people that all the time. It's like, yeah, I'm not the, the, you know, the lawyer for you, but that doesn't mean you don't have a case. You know, Go call and talk to someone else, but. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. right. All right, cool, well we hope this video has been helpful to you. If so, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, otherwise we will see you next week for another personal injury video. As personal injury lawyers, we love what we do and we're happy to share the experience we've gained in personal injury law. To help our family, friends, and YouTube subscribers, we've shared over 300 personal injury videos covering various injury topics. So if you'd like to gain more knowledge that may help protect yourself or a loved one when they're on the roads or out in public, check out our channel or view our playlist of shorts for quick personal injury tips.